Good morning, everyone, and welcome into Wake and Take. It's your boy, Jason, and we've got some football to talk about today. Today, we're going to be breaking down all the trending topics with a very special guest, Tyler Knabley, coming right back onto the show from a few months ago. We're going to talk the draft. We're going to talk free agency and trades. We're going to talk Rashi Rice. We're going to talk Stephon Diggs. We're going to get his rookie flag plant. We're going to get a 2024 hot take from him. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. So go ahead, pull out your coffee, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Tyler! Football! How you doing? Nice. This isn't, this isn't coffee in here, and it's not water either. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm doing good. How are, how are you? Well, there doing we go. All right, man. That's a hydro hydrate, flask man. gang, apparently. That's, this is a thermal <laughs> flask, I, I guess. Thermal flask. Oh, you're the thermo flask. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I have to ask, Tyler. I uh, Usually when I have guests and I know where they live geographically, I try to figure out a mug that matches. So when I have like Canadians, I have a Canada mug. This is what I went with for Minnesota. I got duck with mallard. This, That's fair. Mighty Ducks. Okay, okay. This, this screams Minnesota to you. Not Maybe not scream it, but it fits. Yeah, when I think duck, I think Mighty Ducks, Mighty Ducks, Minnesota. That, I mean, that play, that, I feel like that. that's a, that, that's a, that's a, good, that's a good choice. <laughs> All right. I did it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Big time Timmy Jim, he's in the Trade Gods League. You know this. He's waiting for the chugging contest. For those of you who are unaware, uh, a massive trade just went down in the Trade Gods League involving Tyler, involving me. And uh, he said he's going to chug a protein shake in the next episode of Trade Gods. So make sure you tune into that next Wednesday for some chugging of a protein drink. We're holding you to it, Tyler. I will do it. I'll do it. <laughs> All right. And good morning to everyone else in the chat. Anthony, Jamie, Timmy, Jim. Great to see you guys. Let's get talking with some football. And we'll start with some news that actually broke this morning, Tyler. Nick Chubb's contract is being restructured. The like kind of full details of it aren't out yet, but basically they're lowering his guaranteed salary. He's still going to have a chance to earn the amount he could have in incentives, but you know, basically they're just making it incentive-based contact contract for him. Uh, not really much to say about the news following it, but I did just at, want to ask you. You've been drafting a lot on underdog. How have you been going about this Nick Chubb situation? Like, have you been getting him at all? I've been getting him a little bit. Like when you're looking at Nick Chubb and it's like pick, like pick a hundred is kind of that threshold for me. His ADP is a little lower, but he falls in a lot of rooms. You can get him like 10 picks, 15 picks past ADP most of the time. If you draft enough, like you'll see Nick Chubb fall. He's not a guy that like, like people are scared of this knee injury. Like it was a nasty knee injury. It was like what the his ACL mcl and like something else and he had to get like two surgeries like it was a it sounds like a just a nasty injury total reconstruction so i think people are scared of that on the other hand though like if you want to make the case for him dude's a physical freak we see the squad numbers we see the workout numbers feels like one of those guys who would just attack rehab and just like get like that's the only thing he'd be concerned about i think that dude legitimately loves playing football and he's just a different specimen too like it just like everyone's been talking i don't know i would kind of put him like that derrick henry like kind of thing where Derrick Henry, everyone's been talking about the age fall off for Derrick Henry for four or five years now. Hasn't right. happened yet. Or like hasn't happened to the to the extent that people think it should happen. But um Nick Chubb feels like kind of one of those guys. Like maybe he can come back from this. Maybe not stronger, but you know, maybe do some it wasn't the same injury with Brees Hall last year, but we saw Brees Hall tear his ACL the year before earlier in the season, granted, but I don't know. I think Nick Chubb could. He, there's there's a scenario where he comes back. I, I don't have that much Nick Chubb. I have it pulled up right here, so I can double check real quick. I'll tell you how much uh, Nick Chubb I do have. I have four point four percent. So that's about eight teams. So not a lot. I don't have a lot of Nick Chubb. <laughs> I think. I mean, I, and I think that's fair. I, I mean, I'm someone that is. I, I kind of been buying Nick Chubb if he becomes available just because, I, I mean, you know, I, I'm someone that says this a lot. You have IR slots for a reason. And Nick Chubb, when he's healthy, is one of the biggest difference makers in fantasy football. I mean, a very good running back. And we saw with Adrian Peterson, the year he won MVP, he tore his ACL the year before. So it's not unprecedented for those types of running backs to come back and perform well. I think kind of just the big question mark here around this whole situation is how many snaps did Jerome Ford earn last season? Because he did a really good job in the absence of Nick Chubb. And it's possible that we're looking at a split backfield. Uh, do you think that's the case? Or do you think if Nick Chubb's healthy, Browns just give him the rock? 
Well, I think I think Nick Chubb's going to end up on the pup to to start the year. If it feels highly unlikely he would come like just come back. He's like, yeah, guys, I'm back for week one. Like, if he did, that would be amazing. I think we should kind of start to pay attention to, about that. But I mm -hmm. think Jerome Ford's going to be a starter for at least four weeks in this season. Plus, how good is Nick Chubb going to be? Are they going to want to give Nick Chubb his old workload of 20 carries a game? Like, I think Jerome Ford's a really sharp pick in best ball right now. He goes fairly late. You can kind of steal them. Plus, like, I wouldn't be shocked. Like, Cleveland could definitely be a team that that drafts one of these maybe top three rookie running backs, like like a guy in the second or third round, you know? Like, could be a Corum, you know, Brooks, or a Benson scenario. But it's a little more unlikely. I think there's some more uh, RB needy teams. But I don't think I'd be shocked about – like, they, that team wants to run the ball. That's what they want to do. So, if they feel like yeah. they go out and get a running back and do that in the draft, that's probably what they're going to do. Yeah, Uh and even if they, do, I mean, I don't know if they will. I think they could. I think, especially with the injury concerns for Chubb and last year, even with Jerome Ford doing well, they still did bring in Kareem Hunt. So there is that possibility. But I think even if they bring in someone, it'll probably be later. And I don't think they'd actually push Ford or Chubb for too much, at least this season, maybe 2025. I pulled up Keep Trade Cut. And in Dynasty rankings right now, the cumulative Dynasty rankings, Nick Chubb is RB34 and Jerome Ford is RB45. Um, I'm looking at that and thinking that's a good opportunity to get both of those running backs. And you've got yourself a nice little budget RB room for your dynasty squad. What do you think of that? No, I like that too. I think the only problem with Nick Chubb, his, his contract is up after this year, I believe. So he'll be a free agent, free agent after this season. And it's, it's how much do you like? Cause I think we could, you can make the case like just cause he's going to a different team doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. I mean, look at Derrick Henry. He still has some value. Josh Jacobs still has some value. Maybe Eckler is one of the losers in that, but it how it's just how I think Chubb could be a good kind of buy low opportunity. Like we know what he is at his ceiling, and I'm not yeah. I think he'll ever get back to that full ceiling. But if you think he can like 90, 85 percent recover from this knee injury long term, like you're like mm -hmm. we're looking at like next like the 2025 season, and at least from a dynasty perspective, maybe he gets healthier goes to a team that needs a running back, all that kind of stuff, kind of like a Derrick Henry thing. So I think Nick Chubb has some you like some upside this year, and even then, and contingent upside after this year, I think he could still be a, a decent buy. I mean, at that price, that's, that's pretty much stealing for a guy like Nick Chubb. Definitely, definitely. So I'll just end it here. What's the highest draft pick you'd give for a player like Nick Chubb? Like like NFL draft pick? Like, a, uh, like your dynasty rookie pick. Oh, gotcha. Um, oof, Nick Chubb. I would go like a like a late second. I'm not that's trying to give up that much. That's about where I'm at. Ideally, I think like the 301, I think would just be perfect. I think I would feel very good about sending the 301, the 212. I don't know. <laughs> like that one, one pick. pick. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. So we also had an update in the Rasheed Rice situation. And ladies and gentlemen, you know me. I'm trying not to go too much into this i really don't know what's going to go on we've seen legal updates it seems that this is going to be dragging on and at the very least we now know that rasheed rice is in some hot hot water yesterday an arrest warrant was issued for him by dallas police and he's now facing eight felonies uh six counts of collision involving bodily injury one count of collision involving serious bodily injury and one count of aggravated assault um, all of those things are felonies and not good if you own Rasheed Rice. Uh, do you, I really hate to ask this question. I mean, I think if you have Rasheed Rice, you're stuck now. But is there a world where you'd buy him? Oh, I think there's a world where I'd buy him for sure. Because, like, it, this is going to impact what? I think, like, I read the legal up. I read that long thread. Did you give that, that a read? Yeah. I for oh, I forget yeah. his name. Do you remember his name? I want Davenport, to Drew Davenport, yeah. I think. Yes, Drew Davenport. I read that thread. Was, uh, everyone in the fantasy community was like, uh, copy pasting them, be like this guy does such a good job. And it was a really informative thread. I thought the biggest things to take away from it were like he. It sounded like he thinks that it'll get done like fairly soon. Like this kind of uh, this these kind of charges, like it'll get like it won't be like a Camara situation where it gets dragged out for like a couple of years. But um, he said he thinks. I think he was like, if my scare value was at a two before, now it's at like a four. So it's not even above a five. And like, and even I think worst case scenario is like what he gets maybe four six games like that's i think that's like worst case scenario so if you're from a dynasty perspective like you want to attach yourself to a guy like rasheed rice he's gonna be like what like 22 23 this season like he's a young player he's good he flashed immensely in his rookie season and i think if you could steal him like just just 
just spam trade offers like like early second. If you get an early, because look at Theo Greminger. Theo Greminger did a trade like the day it all happened. He stole Rishi Rice for like two seconds. Like if you can get Rishi Rice for two seconds, you have to do that deal. But um, I get, I get, like people are scared to move off him. But like I don't think it's going to affect him more than like at most like half of this season. He still has his whole career ahead of him. So I'm long term value. I think Rishi Rice is still the same player he was two months ago. It's just the the circumstances around him for this year have changed. Yeah, it's oh, it's such a messy situation. I don't know if I can give an early second. I still think I'm late second and maybe down into third land with this because he is facing prison time. Like he is genuinely facing time in prison, and it, and that has nothing to even do with the suspension. I mean, like if that just is during the football season, then he's not playing, and then there could be a suspension on top of it. Now, the important thing to remember here, everyone listening that these are just charges that he's facing. These aren't like charges that he's actually getting already like punished for. Like a lot of this can still be negotiated, if you will, with lawyers, whether it to be to lower it down to a felony, come, come up with some sort of plea deal. All of that stuff is for lawyers to decide. So that's why I'm not going to come out here and give an opinion on how much the suspension is going to be. I'm not going to say that it's going to be a trial and we're waiting until 2025. I have no clue. I know he has a really good lawyer. I know his lawyer is literally a senator from Texas type guy, like a politician. Got a good lawyer. <laughs> yeah, like a massively good lawyer. So I think with that, things should be okay. He's got a ton of money. Um, and the major injury, yes, it was a major injury, but it was just some stitches on one lady's eyes or something, which of course is bad. You, uh, your heart goes out to her. But I think that all of those things can kind of be explained away a little bit. So anyway, and yes, Drew Davenport's opinion was one to two games as of now, but I just, I don't know where you pull that number from. I really don't. I like, it, it's just, it, it, we'll see. <laughs> we'll definitely see. It's a messy situation, but if you can get him for a good price at the very least, you'll still hopefully at least get one more season out of this guy. I doubt he gets an indefinite suspension. I mean, even Michael Vick went to jail and came back and played right. And one comeback player of the year. So uh, <laughs> I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be fine. So we want to move on to some other trending topics, Tyler. I'll ask you about the Stefan Diggs trade. When that happened, what was your immediate reaction? I was in, I was producing uh, Sonic Truth when it happened. And I get the notification on my phone. And well, for my first thing was put this in the chat to let the boys know. Yeah. My second thought just overall was, it's like just it sucks for Tank Dell and Nico Collins, at least for this year. Because I'm, I'm more of like a redraft. I, I, I play Dynasty. I love Dynasty, but... But underdog redraft is more my my passion, as as many know. Um, I was like, wow, this is like that was my first size. This is gonna change the entire redraft landscape because Nico was going early second, Tank Dell was kind of going in that third, and then Diggs was going late second. Now you kind of see like all of them, like Nico and Diggs go back to back, and then Tank Dell goes a tad later. It's just it was redraft was my first thought. But from a dynasty perspective, after the contract details kind of got worked out where like they're buying out the rest of his contract. So he's only playing for this year. And then he's a free agent after this year. I mean, that's good for Nico Collins, who I believe is also a free agent after this year, if I'm not yeah, um, yeah, last mistaken. Year, so uh, assuming Nico and Tank Dell are still back on the Texans next year and there's no digs, digs go somewhere else, then it's still it's still fine from a dynasty perspective. They, they definitely get a bump down because, I mean, this year does count like as like just the overall year, obviously. And it's going to be a very... I, I expect CJ Stroud to spread the ball around, probably not to hone in on one target too much. He did a great job at spreading around last year. So that's, the, I think that's my, my full thought of just like dynasty. Like it's, it's okay for, it's not as bad as I thought for dynasty for tank and Nico, but it's definitely not great. So. Yeah. I don't know. I think, I think that there's plenty of opportunity for all of these guys to feed. I think it mostly just affects the floor of everyone and not really the ceiling at all. I think any one of these weeks, any of those wide receivers could go score 50 points, but they can also turn around and get zero pretty easily, I feel like. So it's going to be very fun to watch. The big winner is clearly CJ Stroud, who I noticed yesterday in underdog drafts hasn't, you know, risen to the degree I thought he would. I think he's QB3 now, like going ahead of Patrick Mahomes, but still rounds later than Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts. Are you drafting CJ Stroud right now? If I get Nico Collins or Tank Dell, I'm drafting CJ Stroud. It's, it's it's hard. It's hard. To, yeah, it's underdog. The name of the game is stacking, baby. And it's hard to to take a naked CJ Stroud. It's just it's something you don't because like if you're going to take a quarterback that you don't have a lot of stacks with, like like maybe you, like say like you take like Richardson, for example, that's a guy you can take 
with no stacks, like with no other Colts receivers or pass catching options because he can get you points by himself. Mm -hmm. Where like Aaron Rodgers, if Aaron Rodgers scores 25 points, who else is going to score 25 points? Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams, Tyler Conklin, guys like that, right? Yeah. So it's just all about um, looking for that weekly upside and kind of breaking things down from that perspective. True, true. Uh, CJ Stroud so awesome. On yeah, the, he is. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the bill side of the ball, is there anyone that you're buying or selling now? I know that the hype has kind of gone through the roof for a player like Dalton Kincaid, uh, but just when you look at the Bills, who are some players you're kind of looking at? A guy I'm selling just if if his dynasty value is the same of what he's going right now in redraft. Curtis Samuel, I mean, they're going to draft a receiver. They might draft two. Like I, I Curtis Samuel is a good player. Getting a little older now. I how old is he? I I should I should have looked this up beforehand. I Curtis think Samuel, 27? 27, 28. Yeah, I thought yeah, mid to late twenties. But he is going like right now. If you look on underdog, he's going like before pick a hundred, and that is here. Let me go to the ranking. Sorry, two seconds here. It is like he has gotten out of control. He was going like 170 before he signed with the Bills. And now he's going, let's see here, right at what he's he has an ADP of 102. Here are guys he's going in front of Cortland Sutton, Jacoby Myers, Josh Downs, Tyler Lockett, Lad McConkey, Gabe Davis, Troy Franklin. Like, I think I want all of those guys over Curtis Samuel. I'm like, yeah, right now he's the number like the number one wide receiver in Buffalo. Unless Khalil Shakir has something to say about that, but like, and everyone's making the Joe Brady Panthers Curtis Samuel connections. Like Curtis Samuel had his best year under Joe Brady, who's now the, the OC for the Bills. But I mean, you got to think somebody else is going to come in there, and it doesn't matter who they draft, whoever they draft, his value is going to go down. So if you can sell Curtis Samuel as the number one wide receiver on the Bills before the draft, and you have him in Dynasty, try you could probably get like a like there's some there's some managers out there that might take like a mid second. Or like an early second. If you get like an early second for Curtis Samuel, you have to take full advantage yeah. of that. I would just be spamming offers, honestly, because there's the like people believe in this guy. They think he's gonna have like a like a top like twenty wide receiver season. Yeah, uh, it's it's something else. I mean, I know they gave him the bag, and that's really gonna be one of the more interesting things to keep track of next season. Is Curtis Samuel, Darnell Mooney, Deontay Johnson, Gabe Davis. Those four wide receivers got essentially the same contract by their new team, like three years, about 40 million, uh, what, like with all the incentives and everything, which is a lot of money. And I also don't think that all of them are going to get the usage for that kind of money. I think it might vary. So I'm cu very curious just to see how that plays out. And I do think Curtis Samuel, and you just mentioned he's going before Gabe Davis, who I think has probably the better landing spot out of all of those. So I think that that's an excellent time to move on. I probably even take a third for this guy. I like a lot of those rookies going in that round. And I just, I can't pull the trigger on any Bills player right now, except Josh Allen. I'm sending out offers for Josh Allen, but I want to see who that rookie is, like you mentioned, or whoever they trade for. I've got to know, I've got to be able to visualize the targets. And I just can't right now. Like I really can't. Uh, it could go any which way. So anything else on the Bills or Texans before we move on? I'm good. Let's move on, baby. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about the NFL draft. That's obviously awesome. We're going in just a couple weeks. Very excited for that. Um, maybe you'll have to drink a protein shake there as well. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of discourse going on, especially around the fantasy football impact of a lot of these rookies. And so I'm curious to you. I've asked uh, our guests this week a lot of the same questions. I've skipped two for you. We don't care. But I do want to hear about your rookie wide receiver one, running back one, and quarterback two. We'll start with your wide receiver one. Is it still MHJ or are you moving on? I've, I've gone back and forth on this. Um, you, if you're going for safety in a rookie draft, like you got, like, God, I don't have that many wide receivers, like that many good ones exactly. Yeah. Like, I need to hit on this pick with the 102 or 10, like 101, whatever kind of like, if it's single QB, super flex, if you're at the top of the draft and you're looking at wide receiver, and you like, I need to hit on this draft Marvin Harrison. That being said, I like to live life on the edge a little bit. I like to go shoot for that upside. And I think Malik Neighbors just has more of it than Marvin Harrison does. If you look at because he just has some of those traits that Marvin Harrison does not have. He does not have the top end speed. He doesn't have as much twitch as Neighbors has, in my opinion. I think he he can scare. Uh, Todd McShay said it good. He was talking about the same thing. He has Malik Neighbors as his wide receiver one on his board. And he kind of put it in a way where like, Malik Neighbors has that ability, like the potential to scare a defense like Tyreek Hill does. That same kind of 
deep threat. Like we need to know where this guy is on every play. Marvin Harrison doesn't like, yeah, he's a really, really good receiver. He's probably going to be like, I feel like my comp for him is like, you know, AJ Green, DeAndre Hopkins, something maybe like a faster DeAndre Hopkins, but yeah. a guy that's going to command a lot of targets. He's going to kill you in most areas of the game. But when you think DeAndre Hopkins, you don't think necessarily like deep threat, right? Like it's right. just, I just think that Malik Neighbors' upside could be like Tyree Kill. And, and Marvin Harrison's upside is it, it's, it's very, very high as well. But I think it's not like that Tyreek Hill level. It's kind of like AJ, like AJ Green was a good example. AJ Green, unbelievable receiver for a long time. Um, like great fantasy asset, but he never quite got to like that Antonio Brown, Julio Jones, like those levels of like fantasy producers, like Justin Jefferson, if you want to relate it to today's game. Like he never quite got there where he was going like top half of, of a first round in fantasy. I think Marvin Harrison... You know, he could get there, but I think Malik Neighbors could look be like a Tyree kill where he could be like the just absolute alpha on whatever team he goes to. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not gonna argue at all. Malik Neighbors definitely has the higher upside. I just think that Marvin Harrison Jr. is just the locked in wide receiver one. Like I I that's who I'm gonna go with. Now, if I see landing spots and Malik Neighbors goes to the Chargers and Marvin Harrison Jr. goes to the Patriots. I'll be like, all right, you know, maybe I'll take neighbors with Justin Herbert versus Marvin Harrison Jr. catching passes from Jacoby Brissett next season. But otherwise, I think you've just got to stick with the guy who's Marvin Harrison's son and who's been the kind of the locked in first running back or first wide receiver off the board since he was like a freshman at Ohio State. Uh, going to be curious to see how it plays out for sure. On the running back side, who's running back one there? You can go so many different ways here. And don't tell me your rookie flag plant already. Yeah, no, it's no, it's it's it's. it's I won't say the name. I'll, I'll I'll leave some some. If you know if you know me, you probably know who my rookie flag plant is. But RB one wise, I thought about that when you you sent me the show sheet. I thought about it. I'm like Benson, Corum, Brooks. I I, I can make a case for either one. Mm -hmm. But this this was my guy two months ago. I wrote him up for the the draft guide. That's the rookie draft guide that's coming out. So make sure you check that out. So I'm rolling with it. it I said it in the article. I'm gonna say it right now. It's Blake Corum, man. And it's, oh, I don't yeah. think that's a, I don't think that's a popular opinion, but I just think this guy is like, you, you kind of, you look at the film from last year and it's an ACL, right? He's not playing at like what he was playing at in 2021. You look at, if you want any Blake Corum highlight, search up Blake Corum, Indiana run 2020, 2022, look up that play specifically and tell me that guy's not going to be a stud in the NFL, especially like, I just, I just think he's a charger. I, I a hundred percent think he's a charger. He's going to link up with John Harbaugh. They need a running back there. Yeah. They signed Gus Edwards. They signed him for like 2 million or 3 million a year, whatever it was. I'm not scared of Gus Edwards. Like that's, that's one player where Bradley Salder was high on him. I had him on my, on my uh, stream and he was talking about Gus Edwards, but I just like, I, it's, I have a hard time clicking that button, but Blake Horn, yeah. let me just uh, run you through some stats. I just kind of copy paste some article. So I won't read the whole thing, leave some to be desired. So you go make sure you go get the draft kit, but uh, in 2022, like he was a Heisman season, like legit Heisman season, tears his ACL. He finished with 1,400 rushing yards in 12 games, 121 rushing yards per game, 5.9 yards per carry. Now, the same efficiency didn't come in 2023, but he had more total touchdowns in 2023 than he did in 2022. Actually, he had seven more touchdowns it, the season after the ACL compared to this year. Um, despite and he only played two more games last year compared to 2023. And then another thing that everyone likes to talk about with him is the receptions. Uh, he didn't produce enough in the receiving game. That's what I've been hearing from some people. But you look at so in 2021, he as a sophomore, he had 24 catches. The team that's the team leader for Michigan that year in receptions, Cornelius Johnson had 39. So he had 24 catches and the team leader yeah. at 39. They, that's just not what they do there. Like they, if you just look at a target share perspective, that's actually a pretty good target share for his yeah. uh for his sophomore season. So and like plus Roman Wilson, a guy who ever, a lot of people love. I know you are a big Roman Wilson guy. Absolutely yeah. love Roman Wilson, right? That same season, 2021, Roman Wilson or yeah, Roman Wilson had 25 catches that same season. Blake Corman 24. He had one less catch than a wide receiver. Roman Wilson, who everybody loves. So I don't think you can really look at just like raw reception totals. Look at what the other guys were doing in that offense, what they were asked to do. That's why everyone loves J.J. McCarthy. Yeah, he didn't flash like May, Williams, or Daniels, but the, it's the traits that are there. So it's the same thing here with the receiving work for Corum. It's the traits. I think they're there. He has elite vision, like has a really good feel for just running the ball. So that's my case for Blake Corum. That's, that's, that's my RB1. 
I love it. I love it, love it, love it. You guys know me, Michigan fan. So anytime a Michigan player gets talked about, I'll get excited. And I just love the full picture that you put together, Tyler. Really great work. Talking about how he is a receiving back how he is a really explosive runner. Some of the highlights are so good. You can see him like spinning out of tackles, which you rarely see from players, especially in the Big Ten. I mean, those are th- 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 those are some big linebackers you're going up against, and he's just super quick feet, super elusive, and powerful, a nose for the end zone, literally everything you want in an NFL running back. I think he truly is the prototype for an NFL running back, like the guy that's going to go in be your workhorse, score you touchdowns, get those short yards. That's Blake Corum. And I'm very excited to see his draft capital and where he goes. And I'm with you. I hope and think it's the Chargers. That would probably be early third. I'm not sure if they pull the trigger in the second or maybe they have to trade back up. But either way, I do think it's possible. And that would just be a great reuniting. Uh, Maybe they could get Roman Wilson and Blake Corum on that Chargers (laughs) team. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So great flag plant there. And actually, guys, he mentioned the rookie guide, so I'm actually gonna we're, I'm gonna give the wake and take audience something special here, Tyler. I'm gonna go oh, ahead. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm gonna go ahead. Let's just screw it, guys. It is. It's done. The rookie guide is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a little sneak peek, just to thank you all for tuning in to wake and take this wonderful morning. So check this out. The rookie guide is here. We have 79 pages, ladies and gentlemen. The, the table of contents is clickable, so you can go check out the rankings. You can go player by player. We've got it all. If you want to go down to Blake Corum, who we just talked about, just click on Blake Corum, and here you go. You get you get Tyler's bio that he just mentioned. You get his profile. You get everything you need to know about the player. You can go right back to the table of contents by clicking down here at Rookie Guide, and you could just it's, – it's just so good. We've got all these contributors. Check out this list of people, guys. Cody, Theo, Maddie, The Undroppables, John, Allen, me, you, Seth, Maddie. I mean, it's just all over the place with some of the contributors here. It is just incredible, incredible rookie guide. Ton of fun putting this all together. Here's some rookie draft advice. There's the rankings. You know, literally everything you need for rookies. It's available now. Go to playerprofiler.com slash rookie dash guide get that bad boy it's incredible it's incredible they they, they <laughs> cut god that blake corn right if they cut my intro I, I i even said in the email when i sent them i had i wrote like a nice like fun little like intro star i was like you can get because they told me three paragraphs it was technically four with my little fun intro thing i was like you can cut the intro if you want they cut it so now i'm gonna read my intro because i need i need the this is a, a great piece of writing here by yours truly i need this out in yes. the world for my yes. for my personal validation here's what i said this is how I started the Blake Corum thing. There are a lot of people in fantasy in the fantasy community who are skeptical about Blake Corum and question whether or not he can be a true difference maker at the next level. Well, it's a good thing my middle name is Melatonin because I'm here to put the skepticism to bed. Tell me how that doesn't make the cut. Come on now. <laughs> Come on, Seth. Come on, what Seth. What's up, man? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Great, great little oh. intro there. Um, and yeah, guys, seriously, go check out that rookie guide. It's included in the dynasty deluxe package. So you could get that, or you could just get the rookie guide for 10 bucks. And that'll genuinely be the best $10 you've ever spent. It's just a beautiful looking guide with a ton of different information. Seriously, go get that guys playerprofiler.com slash rookie dash guide. Tyler, speaking of rookies, give us your rookie flag plant. Ray Davis. Come on now. It's Ray Davis. I, 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 if Ray Davis goes i don't i'm not projecting this to happen but if ray davis goes in the top the, the day he's a day two pick top three rounds i will do the biggest victory lap on twitter anyone's ever seen and it, it's it's i like the one of the reasons i like him so much nobody talks about this guy except fancy receipts when they're trying to do whatever but nobody talks about this guy ray davis is like he i i, I plead with you if you want to, to just just turn on the film Turn on the Kentucky film. He he, he had a, a weird start to his career. Uh, three uh, transferred in and around some different places. He's the only player in SEC history, the only player in SEC history to have a thousand yards at two different SEC schools at Vanderbilt, a mm-hmm. terrible school by the way, terrible football program in Vanderbilt, and then Kentucky. And you go look at the Florida game, like they were talking about, like him for the Heisman, like it was like a first couple of weeks, but it obviously wasn't like a real <laughs> thing. But he like I think he had like two hundred sixty yards, like four touchdowns like it was an unbelievable game against Florida Ray Davis he just has 
like my comp form, I think Daniel Jeremiah, when I was watching the combine, he kind of said like, kind of like a Frank Gore build, you know, he's a shorter stockier guy, but like he, like he ran a four, five, two at the, uh, at the combine. That's a fine time for him. He weighs about two sixteen, two twenty. So he's got the prototypical size. He can catch balls. He's a really good pass catcher. He has elite vision. I don't, when I say elite vision, I'm not just throwing it around. He has elite vision in and around the goal line in between the tackles. Like there's just plays where, I have this one play on my stream. I'll play it from time to time where like it's a goal line run. He's supposed to follow the fullback to the left and he gets inside pressure from some D tackles and like just split second cuts, cut back wide open, gets untouched in the end zone. Like it's just stuff you can't teach that Ray Davis has. Like I'm just, I cannot, I cannot grave more about this guy. I don't know why he's higher on other people's draft boards. I like, I, I haven't really done my, my full running back rankings. I would, I would, love to put him in at like RB4 behind the big three, behind Benson, Corum, and Brooks. I think he could legitimately be a better player than like Braylon Allen, Jalen Wright, uh, Marshawn Lloyd. I truly think he's in that tier of guys. It's just no one talks about him like that. So I, Ray Davis is my guy. I will ride. Yeah, I, he, I don't care if he gets cut week one. I will ride for, for Ray Davis. He's my guy for sure. Yeah, I, I mean, I like the call a lot. When I left the Senior Bowl, I mentioned that all of the running backs there really did impress me, and Ray Davis was one of the ones that impressed me more so than some of the others. I remember a couple big plays that he took, uh, and that was really hard because uh, his particular team was going up against Tavondre Sweat and the rest of one of the best defensive lines at the Senior Bowl, the national team. Uh, so uh, to see him still produce that well against an NFL caliber defensive tackle and a really good defensive line in general was really, really impressive. So again, I really like all the running backs that were at the senior bowl. Ray Davis is one of those, and I'm excited to see where he gets drafted. I do agree with you that he could be a really, really good, especially complimentary running back in the right backfield. So we'll see. We'll see if he gets that day two draft capital, Tyler. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, but... <laughs> If it did, I would, like I said, biggest victory lap you'd ever see on Twitter if he went day two. Biggest victory lap. I would be insufferable. That's like the that's the one thing. Because it's just like no one talks about him, man. Yeah. Nobody talks about Ray Davis. It's every other running back. Will Shipley. Yeah. Like, yeah. Audra Gastamay gets some love every now and again. Braylon yeah. Allen. Marshall. Like, everyone. Yeah, but everyone. Ray Davis. But Ray Davis. Even Kamani Vidal is more than Ray Davis. Come on now. I like Kamani Vidal. He's not better than Ray Davis. Oh, come on. I like Vidal. But yeah, yeah, I, don't know. yeah. I like Vidal. I like Vidal, but I like, obviously, I like, maybe I'm the wrong person to ask. Well, if Ray Davis gets picked day two, we know that Tyler will be kicked out of the draft house for being too obnoxious. So stay tuned for that, ladies and gentlemen. Let's now move on to the 2024 hot take. Tyler, what do you got for us? Christian Watson finishes fifth or worst on his own team among Packers pass catchers. Jaden Reed, Dontavian Wicks, Romeo Dubs, and then either Luke Musgrave or Tucker Craft are all going to finish. Or maybe they draft a rookie wide receiver too. They're going to finish with more fancy points than Christian Watson. <laughs> I And like I said, I'm not just saying this. Christian Watson, I think, is the only player on underdog. I have 0%. I have not drafted Christian Watson one time. There's been times where he falls. And, you know, I'll star the button. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. I have Jordan Love. I have Jaden Reed. I'm going to click on Christian Watson. I can't do it. I go in a different direction every single time. I cannot click on the Christian Watson button. And it's just, I look at here. Let's, let's pull this up here. I just, oh, but while you pull that up, I just, I just find it so funny. He's like the best ball asset. Like the, like, like he's exactly what you want for best ball. I feel like. Yeah. For be, Yeah. May, and maybe that's where I'm going to be wrong. Maybe that will be my, my downfall in the end, but <laughs> it's, I just don't think like, if you're looking for a consistent value, I don't see it with him. Sorry, give me two seconds. I have it. Here we go. So I actually do this. I used to do my own rankings, and I have my uh, Christian Watson right up in here. So this is for that. We if we just look at last year, like he didn't really do. Like he was hurt a lot last year. Like he had some okay games. But he had some terrible games as well. Yeah. So like if you look, so I think what why people are kind of in on Christian Watson is because they looked at the 2022 season when he was a rookie and they were kind of projecting that for it, even into this season because we didn't see much last season just because he wasn't on the field. His 2022 season, like I was off him last year too because of these stats alone. So I know I'm going through rookie stats, but I think it's at least worth noting considering he wasn't on the field that much last season. He's pretty much, he's just a very similar player. Weeks one through nine, his rookie season, he averaged one catch, 9.7 yards, one kid, one touchdown, which was a rushing touchdown, 
And he was the wide receiver 107 behind Jamal Agnew, Doolin, and Demir Bird. All those guys finished above him in fantasy points through weeks one through nine in 2022. Then 10 through 17, he uh, he has three, he averages 3.7 catches, 60 yards, eight total touchdowns in that span, wide receiver nine in that span, right? All of his, so he, he only had eight of his touchdowns came in a four game span. Eight of his touchdowns yeah. came in a four game span in 2022. But like, if you look deeper dive, like he only had two games with five plus receptions, never had a game with more than six, zero games, double digit targets. He had a 11.7% team target share. Romeo Dubs and Robert Tunyon had a higher share than Christian Watson, his rookie year. Even when people, when people loved him, when he was scoring all these touchdowns and that was with Aaron Rodgers too. And you can argue Aaron Rodgers, Jordan Love, I probably might have to give the edge to Jordan Love now. So probably a better offense, but he's only going to get more competition in Green Bay. Jaden Reed is emerging. Uh, Dontavian Wicks is a guy that everybody loves right now. He's like a deep sleeper kind of guy. Romeo Dub, some people are kind of often because they do love Wicks, but he's still a player that's going to be around. Like, I think it's like he, maybe Christian Watson will have some weeks, you know, he catches a 50 yard touchdown, but I don't think he's never been a volume guy. Like, I think if you're looking for like consistency week in and week out, especially in, like Dynasty, like Gabe, Gabe Davis is like a, has been a fun player to have because like he can win you a week, but he might give you a zero like if, in Dynasty, like some weeks. Like, it's hard to put a guy like Gabe Davis in your lineup in Dynasty or like a redraft for that matter. If you're like a, like a, where you're setting your lineup type of league because you just don't know what he's going to do. So, I just feel the same way about Christian Watson. He's never had a season with more than 45 catches in his collegiate or pro career. Never had a season with more than 45 catches. So yeah, I just, that's for that reason alone, like all those reasons stacked up. And just what we saw last year didn't make me like him anymore. So <laughs> Christian Watson is my, I just, I don't, I don't see it, man. I don't see it. And I think the Packers, like if they want to really surround Jordan Love with weapons, give him another one of these like first or second round receivers, man. Like imagine that, that would be fun. I don't know if they'll do it. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Unfortunately, Tyler, I am a Christian Watson defender, so I'm not going to yep. agree with you too hard here. I think it's reasonable, and I think that Christian Watson is the exact type of player that's either going to bust exactly like you say, or by the end of his career will kind of solidify himself as a wide receiver one or like a high-end wide receiver two. I don't think there's a different range like or a different outcome for him. He's either really good or really bad, and that's the 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 where you'll have to find yourself – for me, when I look at Christian Watson, it's just, I mean, minus his health, he's just been so electric. You mentioned the eight touchdowns in the four-game span his rookie season. That tied Randy Moss. And then, you know, he's a North Dakota State prospect. So it's not like he played D1 football. I mean, a lot of times when we see players come out of these smaller schools, we expect them to take some time to produce. So now we're going into year three. The offense is getting better. He's been electric when healthy. I just think at some point, you're injury prone until you're not. And you're going to be healthy at some point, I hope. Right. And a guy that scores yeah. that many touchdowns, that's that explosive, I think is just so good to roster in fantasy football. I mean, 96 percentile 40 and the speed and the burst is just all up there. 90th percentile college dominator. I mean, you watch his college tape and it's look like it looks like he was playing a completely different sport than the rest of these people. Like always 10 to 15 yards of separations from the from those D2 corners. So I just I I can't quit Christian Watson. I really, really can't. Uh, but you know, betting on a player that hurts his hamstring every single season usually doesn't pay off. So I think you're probably on the right side of the coin here. However, Harry Snowman does point out he got married yesterday to his college sweetheart. So, you know, we, that's a narrative. Yeah. <laughs> Get it married, ready to go, uh, have a good football season. Hopefully, uh, maybe, maybe. if you want a quote for the quote graphic, uh, Christian Watson is Chase Claypool 2.0. No! <laughs> yeah, I said it. I said it. Big athletic no! guy. On a touchdown his rookie year. After that, what'd he do? <laughs> he scored what? Five touchdowns last year? Four in a three-game span. Yeah. yeah. If you had That's him it. those three weeks, you were kind of happy. And if you had him in best ball, you were pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know if we'll agree on that one. That's just a Christian Watson thing. And I get it. Yeah. I totally get it. I just, those are the type of players you I like, you know, this in the trade yeah. gods league, I bought Gabe Davis off of you. I just traded for DK Metcalf this morning. I like Gabe I, Davis too. It's funny. Cause I like Gabe Davis. I think Gabe Davis. Is, I don't know. It's like, it's hard. It's funny to like def, to defend Gabe Davis, but like, yeah, I hate Christian Watson because they're very similar like players. <laughs> 
<laughs> it is what it is, right? It is what it is. You know, I like Hollywood. I like Jameson Williams. Of course, I'm going like to like these speed deep threat guys. I really do. I rostered. You're I traded you type speed. one Thornton, Tyler. Like, yeah. it's like you're a sucker for speed, man. You're like, oh, I love 75 yard touchdowns. You're like the possibility <laughs> of one, you know, like one is easy. I love so good for you. I love the possibility of a 70 yard touchdown so much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just never happens. And I get zero points on my team, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> it is what it is. So we have gone really through everything. So why don't we go ahead and hop into the chat, see if we have any questions to answer. I see none over here on Instagram, over here on YouTube. Let's see. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, Harry Snowman says that the specialists at the Packers found the source of his hamstring problem, whatever that means. But that could be cool. Um, I don't see any questions. Uh, oh, wait. No, yeah, no questions. Everyone just kind of popping along with us. So there thank you, go, you guys man. to the chat. It sounds like we had a very agreeable episode. So that's very awesome. That's very, very Who's cool. Who side are you on for Christian Watson? Let's let, let, let's let the yeah. chat decide. Yeah, chat. Chat, are you a Christian Watson truther or untruther? Or a hater. <laughs> a hater. <laughs> oh, no. Breaking news. Rest in peace, OJ Simpson. That's not true. Oh my god, it is. Is it really? Wait. No. Oh. Yeah. TMZ oh, he, oh reported my god. eight minutes ago. Oh my goodness. So where were you? <laughs> we can take, man. That was on we can take. Well, rest in peace to OJ Simpson. Great football player. The other stuff. Up for the court to decide. <laughs> I was curious how you were gonna go throughout. You know, great. Know. How do you give? Yeah, you're the host uh, of the show. I'm not. I'm not getting involved in this one. This is all you. Yeah, how do you? How do you have an obituary for OJ Simpson live? I don't know, but I don't you know. know yeah, yeah, obviously yeah. terrible news, and heart goes out to him and his family. <laughs> What's at the show, Tyler? Where can the people find you? <laughs> Oh yeah, hey, find me at uh at PPR Tyler on Twitter and on YouTube too. We stream underdog drafts every single night. Every single night tonight will be uh day number 39 with a consecutive stream. And I'm looking to at least get that to like 50. And before like the NFL draft, uh, it, there regardless, there will be content on my channel every single day. Uh we're a very fast growing community, very yeah. tight knit, you know. We talk it's it's a, it's a back and forth with the chat all, all the time. So, come hang out with us on uh, at PPR Tyler on YouTube. Twitter, you can watch the stream uh, both locations. But yeah, it's a fun time. We just draft, draft, and that's a, we, we draft some more. That's all we do over there. Yes, definitely go follow him, especially if you like underdog drafts and just that content in general. He's doing really, really great work, grinding out there, getting that channel to where it is today. So just make sure you go his way. He, you know, grinding on that, but also helping us out tremendously on the social media side as well here at Player Profiler. Just make sure you give Tyler some love. He's crushing it out here for us and himself. And uh, yeah, so I can't thank you enough, Tyler, for joining me. This was another fun episode. Love having you on the show. We'll definitely have you back on again. And I'll see you for some trade gods, it sounds like, because you'll be on next week's episode. So that'll be a ton of fun, too, breaking down some trades and stuff. So Tyler, thanks again for joining me. Audience, thanks again for tuning in. You all have a terrific Thursday, a wonderful rest of your week, and I'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern on the Player Profiler YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe. Peace. From the Podfather to you, I deeply appreciate you tuning in. Many ask, what can I do? What can I do to help support the host, the research they do, the production costs? Go to playerprofiler.com, Dynasty Deluxe, World Famous Draft Kit, Rankings, DFS Dominator, and of course, Data Analysis. Subscribe to any one of those, and you support all of us, and take Player Profiler to the moon.